Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. We're working on B-Twist. It's a word game where you find words from the letters on a grid. Today we're going to sort answers, and we started this yesterday and almost, well, almost made progress. <laughs> we'll see how it goes today. All right, so we left off with this error. Um, can't convert value int to expected argument type. And I, I, I figured it out like two minutes after we finished, of course. But um, the problem is that it doesn't know. Um, I did identifiers for these things because it's just an int, an array of ints. And ints don't have, they're not identifiable. So you have to provide the ID. So I'm pretty sure um, if we do, is it slow? dot self I think um, it'll say take the number as itself and we know they're unique because of the the um, well we know they're unique because it's a sorted array of unicified values and uh, so I think that'll do something whether it's everything we want I don't know but uh, I think that'll fix the immediate problem all right and I just said run And I should probably turn off this all answer stuff while we're doing it, but um, we'll let it go. Okay, so, oh, I see tavern right away. Uh, let's... There's no S's or anything there, so we'll do that. Well, that's six T A V E R N. That's six. Let's find something that's shorter. Usually, that's all I can find. And a little rotate. Oh, interesting. Oh, no, I have no. Okay, that's good. Uh, edges. Okay, so now if we look at our list, oh, okay, yeah, um, three, four words I found. I didn't know if Taver was a word for Taver, whatever it means. Edge, sled, while. Okay, that's good. Um, I don't know. The look of that could be better from my perspective, but it's not. It's not terrible. I think maybe we could frame it half size I think maybe you found would be enough because it's pretty clear they're words um, and I don't know there's there's different styles for this uh, this look so let's see what we can do there you know I keep threatening I want to make a a UI zoo book for Swift UI and like take the list that like that is a list with sections and there are four standard ways to show it. Let's see what they are, you know. Um, but unfortunately, I don't remember. Okay, so. Let's see what Paul does. I guess that's not worth the trouble. Let's 
Styling list view sounds promising. Oh, that's a good site too. That one, I mean, hacking with Swift is probably my number one. Uh, Majid site and this site are two of the others I go to a lot. And Code Codeco, I call them Codeco, but you know. <laughs> All right, so he added sections. That's the view we got. We don't need footers. Okay. Um, nothing's links to anything better. Breaking forms into sections. No, okay, that doesn't sound like it. This does. Okay, automatic grouped inset. Okay, so I think this is grouped. I don't know what inset group looks like. Automatic sidebar plane. Well, plane is still a little nicer. Yeah, this is the kind of thing I had in mind. You know, just take take something like a list and here's six standard styles for it. What does it do? Okay, this is inset. Let's get this visible. Okay, that's not bad. This is a bit takes a lot of space so just grouped but I think plain separators no inset not grouped well I wouldn't say it's not grouped I mean it's got the sections fruits vegetables I don't know what the summary is that's probably the footer okay so it looks like well, what's the difference between plain? Plain and inset look pretty darn similar to me. Got gray text for the separator and not much room. Yeah, I, th I think plain will do it. And, okay, yeah, just list style. List style plain will do it. Okay. Okay, and then before I forget, um, I want to deal with, I think we can do animation on rotation and maybe get a nice look. We'll see. Okay, but sort answers by length. All right, let's run that. Oh, no, let's not run that. Let me take out that uh, all answers thing that's slowing us down. Search view, score view. Now that last board looked good to me. It had it had lots of possibilities. I saw some other words without without even trying. Um, I think we've had a lot of fairly poor ones though, and I think maybe part of it is the way we're selecting them. This this will come back later, but um, right now we just have a list of letters in approximate order. Well, uh, kind of a percent order, you know. J, Q, and Z are kind of 1%, and then E is, you know, 10% or whatever it is. So we'll have 10 E's, 1 J, 1 Q, 1 Z, you know, 7 D's, 7 N's, whatever. Um, and you select one of those letters at random. But like the game Boggle, each die has um, six different letters on it. But like one of them is almost all E's. And so you don't get six E's in one board that way. And we've seen that at various points. Um, spices. Wide. I don't know if wides is a word. Yeah, okay. How, oh, I can't quite get however. Can I get hospice? Hospice. 
this. Okay, that's nice. After I'm complaining, uh, all of a sudden we get them. Bryce. Well, this might not. Um, soul. Okay, and then power. No? About, oh no, there's no E by the R's. Okay. Um, heed. Heeds. Okay, I think I got some variety there. Not a lot in each category, but it's a little tighter looking. I can take that. What did I get from hospice? Not much. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think that will do for us. Um, all right. So now let's fix the title, maybe uh, and the width. Hmm. I don't remember how to do. I wonder if I just put a spacer there for now, if it'll look okay. Okay. Um, that's answers view. No. Answer details. Hmm. Well, that is the... Hmm. Well, okay, let me let me put this in an H stack. I, I said I was going to change it to you found. We'll put this in an H stack. I think, honestly, it belongs in its own entity. And I'll try a spacer for now and just see if it takes gives it half the space um but yeah let me extract this at least into a function oops no there it is okay um this is you found Maybe words, words you found. Okay. Briny, shiny. Okay, again, I think we have a few. No, it did not take half. Uh, um, hmm. I want to be device independent.
well, and yeah, I can do frame infinity, but I want, <laughs> I want frame half infinity. Hmm. Well, maybe I can just put something real in there and it'll give it credit. I think spacer is just too willing to shrink to nothing. And I don't want to bring out the geometry reader. Um, just for this purpose. After what we found, it's kind of. Well, we, we'd have to pass something from that top level down. Um, yeah, I want to make room for it. So even if you don't show it, I want to. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um, Gent. Whoops. Molly, I think, is a word, right? It's a little nut of some sort. How about talls? No. A little archaic, maybe. Vu. I don't see do. Ams. And Ally, Ally, Tally, did I do? Oh, let's enter this twice. I don't know if we, yeah, okay, good. Um, scam. ENT lint. I don't know if I did that one yet either. I'm happy to find out about them though, that's true. Um, mood. No D. No. Yeah, that's true. We could work out something like that. Um, okay, it's not doing it. Hmm. Okay, that's list style. Shape bigger. Okay, we worked our way through that. Grid. Okay. Um, I think maybe I do have to do geometry reader. You would think there'd be a way outside of it. Yeah, I can do that. No. All right, let's try. Let me 
just put something arbitrary and just see what it looks like. But yeah, your suggestion, like showing, showing the words that would have matched. I don't know. I think the, the thing is you're going to have a lot more when you actually see how many, um, they found and you didn't, <laughs> at least my experience, it's always a lot. Um, I've played some of the online boggle games that'll show you that. And it's just like, oh my goodness, less. Vietnamese holiday, I think. <laughs> no. Okay, I've got some anyway. Okay, well, that's that's trimming it. I guess 250 looks like 300, maybe 150 might do it. I don't know. This may be going in a bad direction. Yeah, I know what to try. Okay, well, we'll see what happens here, but oh, I gotta get actual words. Okay, whoops. Dote. need something a little different size wife truck no truck no s okay yeah that's that's all right and then I think my trick is going to be um, take the frame off and then dot opacity zero. Right. And maybe we can blur it or do something with it. So D, so da, no. Doubles, we need a U. Tobles. Selma, eyeballs, jibbles. How about jibes? Okay. Yeah. So I put the thing we have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think when you, you finish the round. So I want to make it. Hmm. So I, I do want you to be able to go back through and take the list of words that you found versus um, words that they found. And I'd like you to be able to go back and find it on the board. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, Maybe that side puts up a small board and then and then goes into its list or something. I don't I don't know. We'll have to find some some approach. I do want to put this down. 
Okay, but I, I, I will say we are um, we're definitely getting to closing in on what I want to be. Okay, now we got the V stack. Let's put the title in. Make it a little smaller. Hmm, this is a little awkward. Anytime the style starts getting above a few lines, I get a little nervous. You know, it's like mm, there's a concept there. I'm not quite pulling out, and sure enough, I want somebody else to use the same one. And I'm like, yeah. Um. Okay. So. Th this is sort of a placeholder um, for now. All right, let me run this. Yeah, th there could be a mode like that. Um, oh, that's interesting, yeah. It becomes more challenging when you get a bigger board. Okay, Tapest. Oh, we can't get to Tapestry. We got no R. Or, or why? Tapes works, though. D no. Detail. No. Detent. No. <laughs> um, meet. Meated. Uh, M. E. No. Okay, back there. Um, well, both meets. Oh yeah, that'll work. Smite. Smited? I don't know, smote. <laughs> yeah. Digging around here. Okay, mapped, made, mapped. Oh, can't quite get a D out of that. Um E, e, there's no E by the V. Okay. Avail? Not enough A's. Adva... Adva... S-O-A-P. Can't quite get to the... Oh, there it is. E... No. Okay. Take a look. You found. All right. I think that's I think that's good for now. But um, yeah, let me capture that that game mode idea. I'll put it a little towards the bottom, but um, much time as you want. Um, time limited. Or um, find a specific word, two player mode, um, set a seed. Yeah. Yeah, that could be that could be fun. I mean, you could. You could have a a shared board, a shared result board with your friends, you know, and see who see who got the most for a given a given seed. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I, those are those are good good ideas for future things. I think. All right, sort answers by length. I think we've done, and I like it. Okay, so guesses, manage prefix testing and insertion. I just don't know. Let's take a look again. I'm gonna close all these. Open guess. Oh, uh, answer. Get 
with our new naming convention here. All right, so the way it is now, um, okay, that's the answer. Uh, you submit or you submit prefix, and then those two choose between, you know, how to, how do you set that with the with the flag set? Um, oh, let me um, let me find the caller of this. Should be content view, I think. Uh, game, okay, right. So game, I'm gonna rename this to submit. Right, so this is doing the prefixes. Whoops, let's try that again. Yeah, it, it all comes down to kind of like who's, who do we see as being in charge of this rule? We could say it's game that it's a game rule that you get the prefixes for free. Or we could say the answers manages your guesses, your your submitted answers, and it says you do that. So the first one is more of a policy. Having it in here, you know, that this is a game level policy. That that has an attraction to me. Um, also doing that, notice we're consulting vocabulary and answers. I don't think answers should know about vocabulary. So I think I want to leave it here. Whether, well, let's, let's extract something. I mean, maybe we could get all those prefixes. Yeah, answers I don't, um, does not, and I believe should not know about vocabulary. Um, what I what I think is we're saying an answer is is just a submitted thing. It's sort of a game policy. Well, when you play like Boggle, the you roll the dice and two people are playing their thing. You um, you each build up your word list and then you walk through them. And I say I found cats and you say oh I did too and we both cross it off. And I found dogs and you didn't and I keep it and I get points. And I found grossable, and you go like, that's not a word. And you're right, okay, it's not a word. Throw it out. But it's it's not anything to do with the answer list. So um, I feel like it is game policy. Um, so knowing that there's a vocabulary and there's an answer sheet, that really is sort of part of the game aspect. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really is a, a barely enhanced word list. Um, it it throws out duplicates or ignores duplicates, but um, yeah. So, but I do think I do think I don't think this communicates as well as it could the fact that this is a bunch of prefixes of words. So, let me. Um, let me restructure this. Okay. Um, and I, I want to get this. Okay. I want to build up the prefix list first. So uh, let prefixes equal. this um, this and then map that to 
string sub answer dot prefix of dollar zero. Okay, so that, that gives me the prefixes from four up to my answer length, but not equal to it. So if I get a six letter word that's four and five, I will make a four letter word and then a five letter word. And then I'm gonna say, whoops. I'll get it right eventually. All right, and then this, this next block, I'm gonna say for, um, for prefix in prefixes, do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, right now I push that into um, answers, but I think I think you're um, maybe this becomes prefix. Let's make it is is prefix. Let's check this real quick. Okay, no. <laughs> when you're traveling, you never know who's gonna reach out to you before you go. Is prefix, whoops. Come on, next code. Okay. I don't know if it's just a responsiveness issue or what. Um, oh man. But I wish the refactoring worked a little better. Okay. So in effect, I think what we're suggesting is let's pull the, make this not private and let's replace these with the is prefix value. So the ones calling it, okay, we'll submit prefix is prefix true. And then this one submit answer with is prefix false. And then I think I want to make this just be a little method. It's like, are you coming or not? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. Prefixes for string. Maybe of. Returns array of string. Okay, so now we walk through the prefixes. And 
and we add anybody that's in there. Okay, let's make sure this is working and then we'll finish the cleanup. All right, now I don't think this is used by our callers. It may be in the test. Okay. Not used directly. And probably okay. Let's let's fix these test ones though. And mostly they're gonna be is prefix true. This one can be false, just to mix it up. It's a little worse for the test to have to, to say that. Uh, it's 8586. Is that in here? No. You're right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Definite oversight. That's good. That shouldn't be needed now. Submit is empty. Word count, letter count, preview. Yeah, so he's smart enough to answer some of these questions we want, but he's not he's not doing a lot of decisions. He's doing a lot of counting and he's got this one kind of duplicate check. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. I know when you play the game, if you've got a good board, you can you can have duplicates and you realize like, oh, you know, hey, you already called that one. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let me just run those tests because I did change it. All right. Um, let's let's see. Reworked how game manages prefix testing and insertion. I think that's what we've done. Okay, and that passed as we expected. And we'll just do a run. Uh, my goal is just get something with a prefix and hopefully uh, that still works. Okay, so... Him. Hmm. I'm not seeing a lot of words here. Urs. There's no C there. Tov. T A R hmm Axes Daxes no Mas Mers Nurse Terse No Purse Oh <laughs> let's, let's 
start it again. How about Tood? Okay. H O T S. There we go. Okay, we got both words. Make sure they've got the right colors. No, they don't. What just happened? Entered by user is bold and black. I got it backwards somewhere. <laughs> uh, let's see, game. Is prefix true? That is not what we asked in the answers. If it's not a prefix, if it's entered by user. Okay, so we'll. Okay, that deserves a test because we have not tested. We 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 put some in with true and some with false, but we never really checked that. If you submit it as a prefix, it comes out as a prefix. So let's do that. Um, expedition failed. Fish sticks goes to fish sticks. That, wait. D wait, did that fail before? Contains word. Let's make sure that it checks for word, not just not just answer. Um, I thought we showed zero tests. Maximum word count and score. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. I'm not sure how much to emphasize that maximum word count thing. Yeah, it does require that. Um, I'm kind of thinking, like, I don't want to know all the four-letter words out there. <laughs> um, I don't even know if I care to know the five-letter words. I mean, what I want to see is, um, you know, I missed Hobenstein or something, you know, some long word that... I almost had would be even more interesting. Um, now shoots, but if if cod shoots was a word, like it'd be neat to know that I missed a word that had my word as a suffix, you know. Um, I almost feel like I should show you six letters and upwards. And if he found a 10 letter word, like I'd want to know that. Um, but I think, I think when we get to showing the, the collected words or the generated words, I don't think I care about four and five letter words. I mean, I sort of assume I could find them. I, I mean, obviously I miss a bunch, but um, it's the longer words that I'm really interested in as, as a game designer, I guess I want to encourage you to find longer words. So when you play Boggle or other games like that, that you quickly find those, those long words. And, um, I don't just like my friends that don't count three letter words. Cause it's just too boring to enumerate them all. And they know them all anyway. I think you should get to that point with the four letter words and, even the fives, I don't think are so critical. So I think I might just show a subset and maybe even only show like at most three in each category or maybe all the longest words and only three in the next, you know, the next ones down through uh, six through whatever, you know. Um, it. 
I, I don't know. It, it's a trade off, but I definitely don't feel like I need to know the the total count because that's just that's just depressing. You know, I found thirty eight words, and I felt like, oh, I found a good set of words, and then finding out that, oh no, there are you know twenty four hundred and fifty two. Um, does it? I don't know. It's true, but it's not helpful <laughs> to me. You know, I'll I'll get more depressed by it than excited. I think. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we got to figure out what's going on there. Oh, no. First, we need a test that... Um, okay, we want words at the beginning. Function um, knows whether word was... Um, submitted as a prefix. Yeah, that's actually kind of what I want. Wow. Oh, I missed I missed the test stuff there. What what did it suggest? Wow. Let me see if I can make that happen again. Word was no okay. No? Okay. Um oh there it is. Let's take that as just getting us started. Okay, I submit fish true. Then I submit um, splash false. And then I want to say set dot. Hmm. And I want something that's already there. That has the words you found as a prefix. Well, that's true. That could be that could be interesting to highlight. Um, or maybe maybe yeah, maybe I filter out ones that had as a prefix, and I show you all those, and then I'd still want to know what the longest words were. But if it's if there are only six letter words as the longest word, like I don't feel bad, you know. <laughs> if all I found was five or six ones. Okay, so let me let me dig out my answers. Words of size. No, I don't care about that. Hmm. I guess I got to look at the values. Okay. Um so dot values sub 0 equals answer fish true value sub one equals well actually it's the other order isn't it because we put the most recent first Okay. All right. Let's let's make sure that's. Oh, I gotta reverse them. Did I do that? Enter by user. False. Is prefix true? No, I still did that wrong. If the prefix is true, enter by user is false. If the prefix is false, then it was entered by user. Okay, let's try that. And then the duplicate word, we'll have to figure out what's up there too. I don't know, sometimes it leaves an earlier failure, but that's suspicious. And I think I might flip this one just to be make sure it's independent of being a word or not. Okay. Let's clear this because he's not. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Xcode. Some days. But, I mean, I've used how many IDEs in my career, and I've never found one that didn't have any bugs. <laughs> Just the way of it. Okay, I think something's wrong. Where clauses? Okay, true. Um, back to this. We got something backwards. His prefix bull entered by user should be not his prefix. So how did that test pass? It wasn't marked as a test. All right, let me run this one by itself and then I'll run that one by itself. I hope this one passes and I hope this one fails. <laughs> Yeah, I got so excited about all the auto-filling, it didn't fill in the word test. Mm. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll run them all. I don't want to compare answers because they have IDs because that's handy, but um, and I think the reason it's handy is that it, it helps the list stuff keep track of where it is better. I don't, I don't think it's dramatically important, but yeah, the ID Okay, are we, we're good. It ran so fast, I didn't hear the beep. Good. Okay, let's commit that. Let's get rid of that warning. Okay, we prefer where clauses. Preferred over a single if inside a four. I'm not sure what that means.
No. A new syntax was added. Oh. Okay. Missed that one. For value where in prefixes answer. Where brief for value where value clause in array do no do just do something now what Is that a swift question? <laughs> okay. Oh. Swift. Oh, it's backwards. For value in this, where value. Okay. In that Swift too, so I've missed this for a while. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I mean it. It it gets the if out. I suppose that's a little better. You could also do something like prefixes dot um was it contains and then where vocabulary dot contains dollar zero or something you know um but i think it's a it's a slight improvement okay I must do this relatively rarely. I don't think I've hit that message before. I probably tend to do pipelines more. Okay. Now the other thing, the last thing I think on this answers, and I'm not, I'm not sure how to best. Well, okay. The, the problem is when we do word sizes and words, we regenerate the whole list, group it, sort the keys, reverse it. And then we come in and ask for words of that size. We take the whole list, group it, sort it. Well, not sort it, but you know, it's, it's there. Um, it would be nice if this kept up with things. Okay. So in effect, I think we, we kind of need both. Well, I don't know who's calling values now. There may not be anybody left. Okay, answers is this the tests are, but there's no production code calling for ants for values anymore. And that seems fine to me. Actually, I would go as far as saying that and it should build. Oh, yeah, cuz the tests will get the special access. Um I don't know. It's always asking zero and one. Like I just did. I guess that's half of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's happy with that, which is good. I mean, it's encapsulated, in other words. Um, but I think we can... Well, values by grouped by should give us something. It gives us a dictionary grouped key
group key to answer where grouped key is hashable. Well, in our case, it's ints because it's the count. I'm, I'm thinking submit should, well, okay. Yeah, the reason this is tricky. So we use values internally and we use it for this is the real thing that counts. The values, the maps and all that, that doesn't matter. But this, we're, we're keeping track of values. What was the most recently entered value? And um, the code we just did right in game, like we were careful, maybe subconsciously, but we, we put the prefixes in and then the word they actually chose. So when it finds the word and it drops it down, it drops it down towards itself and then underneath that are the prefixes. And I think that's a good thing. Um, now, do we need to maintain both sets or both, both things? And that may be, um, sorry, good answers again. Yeah, we could just put the three in their own list. And, and not not track anything beyond that um i had at one point i was hoping i could keep track of um just keep track of the group that that data structure that this thing is you know it's just a um it's just a a hash table group key is count in our case so it's int to array of answers and you just append to the corresponding you know you look it up and then append to it a little annoying but yeah so okay so let's let's pull that in and maintain this structure as our actual core structure the the dictionary okay so i'm going to do this as a kind of kind of parallel change sort of thing i'm going to introduce the new mechanism to hold it i'm going to make sure everybody writes to the right place and then we'll get rid of the readers of the old system okay so this structure is um answers by length and the type is into answer yes good okay um well, and we can start it off empty. Okay, I know that does. Good. All right, so nobody cares at this point. No one's using that. Um, I can capture it here. Let's say this equals, and then I'll do this part again count words of size from the group of answers now this is answers by length of size which is an array of answers cannot assign to property of oh, mutating um hmm. let's do this and then same thing up here Answers by length, that's the grouped by count dot keys dot sort of dot reversed. Okay, that should be the same. Now I've got the field, but we're not using it. Okay. I thought I could get file private things. Hmm. 
All right, let's take the file private off for now. Okay. Um, we'll get our test to pass. Now this, okay, so they're, they're generating it each time, but now I want to make, this should be the only insert, right? It's the only mutating function in the whole thing. Okay, good. So we know we're inserting the values. Um, okay. If it if it contains the word, we're not doing anything. If it doesn't, we're going to get this answer. All right, and now I want to insert it into answers by length. So answers by length. Hmm. Now there's a replace update value. Okay. Um, let's, let's get the, um, let answers, let previous prior, keep it short, prior answers equals, um, answers by length sub word dot count or nothing. Okay. So we, we get... We get the num we get the words that are already in there. All right, and then it answers that length dot update value. The value is inserted. Oh, internal. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Um, prior answers we're going to insert to it um, append is fine answer okay so we're taking um, the existing one I guess that's word or uh, guess oh that should be answer okay so take the existing words of that length, append the new word of that length that we know is not in there, and then um, update the value with um, prior answers. And the key is um, word.count. Okay. Now that should, well, right now no one's looking at answers by length, so it's, um, it shouldn't blow up, but it's not accomplishing anything. But this is, this is us setting up the parallel structure. Now, I believe answers by length should be updated every time answer is submitted. You know, we, whenever it's inserted, it's also going to get updated in answers by length. Now, some of these might be easier. I mean, maybe values, does it pay to keep it around as a total list? And I don't know. Um, we don't remove anything from that list, so it should simplify something. Okay, but now answers by length should have the right values so this should not be adding anything we can use the class level one or the instance level one okay 
Okay. Okay, so what, what the change of that is, that is instead of regenerating this, this dictionary every time we look up a word size or look up a word, a list of words of that size, we are getting it back. Um, we're getting it from a data structure we maintained as we go. All right, now the question would be, well, let's make sure that works <laughs> step by step. Okay, so is it easier? Y yeah, so I, I think um, that works. Let's commit it. Track answers by count as we go. And should we, can we return these other things only looking at answers by count or do we need something from the values? All right, now I think we know the answer is this one for sure needs the values because it carefully put them in most recent order. And um, that's, that's what its job is. Okay, now the others, well, could you answer the question contains consulting that, that dictionary instead? And yes, I don't think it's a big deal, but we've got it sorted by length. So you don't have to skim through every word you submitted. You just have to, you know, go through the ones of that length. So let's, let's compute that by that. Okay, so this is answers of key of length of word dot count. Okay, so let's let um, um, possible answers is this, and then return possible answers contains the word that matches. Okay, we know it would only be in the one with the current length. Um, right, otherwise empty. And it would only be in this if the word has that length to start with. So we're, we're looking for it in a smaller set of things. All right, most letters. Um, well, I think that that definitely comes from this. Um, Hmm. Well, you can certainly take the keys, kind of like we do here. Answers by length dot count dot max L zero. Okay, so um, right. So if there are no ma uh, keys yet, we just default to zero. And if there are, then we take the biggest one. Okay, so let's make sure these two are happy. Now word count becomes a little trickier. Well, is empty becomes pretty easy, right? It's just answers by dot empty. Okay, word count, we, we would have to, um, Well, we'd basically have to sum across all the all the keys. Okay, so uh, this is answers by length dot reduce zero. So we're doing this something, and this is answers because it's an array. Okay, now this is becoming more complex than the simple count because we maintain them. Um, these in some expression. 
Well, um, whatever the answer is so far, plus what are we getting from this thing? Do we get the key? Oh, we get an error. All right, that should not be an error. It's just wrong. Dictionary int answer dot element. Hmm. Okay, I think that's all right plus answers dot count okay so for each map you know key to count to array of answers uh, we're going to take this the total number of answers in that array we don't even look at them but we take them and um, add that into our count so that should be okay a little more complicated uh let's think argument into um why insert into no I don't see why that's different than this one if answers yeah Is answers not? Oh, okay. I guess it's not. Answers dot value dot count. Okay, because this comes back with key and value. All right, which is good for down here. <laughs> um, so the word count should be that that array sorry the dictionary pair is the key and the value the value that comes back count of that all right make sure this is good Good. All right. And then letter count. Well, I think we can be clever. That may be risky. But um, answers by length. Again, we've got the key and the value. Okay. So the answer, if we had the key, right, that's an int. Isn't it key and value? All right, I want to say times answers. Oh, answers dot value dot count. Okay, so how many letters are in this of of this word length? Take the length times the number of answers that have that length, and you've got the total answer length for those things, I believe. Well, it's already c completed. What are you guys? I don't know. Another old message. Xcode's losing it a little bit. I hope it's not too clever. But I, I do think it is... It's going to be cheaper than walking through each word in the array and and counting it. You know, because we've already... We already know the counts because we already computed it before. So, all right. Why are you still saying testing? Let's let's clear these. Clear test is clear build. Okay, run those tests one more time. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Um, let's commit. So we make um, most methods use answers by length to compute their values. Well, how they compute their values using answers by length. Okay, now um, the last thing with this is we still have these values kicking around. They were becoming a list of total length, but now nobody's using it except for preview. Okay, so preview takes the whole list of values, keeps the first three, and then and then turns them into a displayable thing. Let's extract a constant for this. This is um, uh, self dot preview size preview count. Okay, and um, we got to give ourselves that constant. Let previews count equals three. Okay. Now you're supposed to wake up and say, that's great. Preview count. That's better. Okay. Um, so that should be almost a non-change, but I'm going to take the, I'm going to make the prefix. I'm going to make it so we only keep three or four things in our list at a time. Okay. So, um, here we're inserting this now, currently we insert one for every letter or for every word that comes in, this list gets arbitrarily long. Instead, I'm going to say, um, if values dot length greater than preview count, well, hmm, yeah, if that's true, then we're going to do something to values. I don't know if there's a remove last. Yes. Um, is there a keep? Remove all, no. Let's just do this. Okay. Um, values dot count. Okay, so uh, we're limiting ourselves to three things. Yeah. You well, know, this is one of those, it's like where I want to argue. <laughs> but be, because, like, I have an argument that says it starts off zero. I'm never let it get bigger than three. So there's no chance it's ever five. But this is, this is a little bit of a... Um, defensive kind of thing. Uh, yeah, that, I don't know. That makes me hesitate to do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it should. And in a way it's, if it did, well, if it did get more than the count, it, it's something Well, it, there's only one way to do it, right? The only place we insert is right here. Nobody else, nobody else mutates in this version. So I'm going to leave it as an if. It, in a way, it's slightly uh, self-healing. <laughs> yeah, you're only inserting one answer at a time. If we had a bulk insert or another method that mutating function that changed it, it might be possible. But even this, I think it's slightly self-healing because if you ever insert a word, um, 
Mm, no, take that back. I was going to say something about prefixes mattering, but it doesn't. So I, I'm going to say this is the whole focus of, of mutation in here. And, you know, we're maintaining an invariant. The invariant is values.count less than or equal to preview count. And um, this, it starts off true and it's maintained true. So I think, I think that's legit. Yeah, we're going to look at them. Now, I suspect many of them could could answer their question with contain. So let's see what they can do. Um, well, OK, we don't get. All right, this one is preview. OK, who's using values? Is it only that last test? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, we don't use enough words to matter. The only thing is. Oh, we're always asking for words of a size. OK, yeah, we can get it from that. We get actual answers. OK, and this time we do care about the actual answer. Most of the time or much of the time you're worrying about words. But in this case, we really do care what the answer is. So sut dot sut dot words of size words of size five sub zero dot word a slight bit of duplication in the test here those tests and then I think I think values oh boom is this the test we're expecting yes Index out of range. Yeah, it must be something about the subscript. I mean, words comes back as an array, I think. <laughs> yeah, array of answer. And it should be in there, but let's look at answers by length. SPL ASH. Okay, I can't count. <laughs> that is a six letter word. Okay. Reassuring in a small way. <laughs> Maybe not so much for my counting ability, but you know. Oh. The path does not exist. Well, oh, whoops. No, oh, it's the one of four. It is four. There's the answers by length, right? Oh, geez. Yeah. Makes it feel like it's a little low level.
Yeah. I mean, that's telling, giving me a message. Screw the test up twice. All right. Um, so I think what we want is really this. Um, <laughs> it seems natural to go zero than one, I will say. I, I think I want to give this another function that kind of contains answer, but it's going to look at um, answers word count. Answer no word dot count. Answer has no member word that oh no answers. Sorry, I keep missing this S up. Okay, so I want to say the answer word. So I'm looking up the word and hmm no maybe i don't even want that maybe i want the answer well i honestly think i want this sorry subscript word of string gives answer question mark yes I don't know if that is right, but we'll look at it. And that is AI kicking in. Okay, so if you give me a word, I'm gonna look it up by count, yes. And if, if I don't find it, I return nil. Otherwise, I'll take the first one where the word matches. Okay, and then you can look it up. Um, yeah, first would work also. But I think I think this is pushing it. it. It's saying, if you really want the answer, I'll give it back to you. I'll look it up where the word string matches, and you can get the whole answer back. If you need the ID, you got the ID. If you need whatever, you got it. Now, right now, that's only tests, but it it feels like a natural member of this. So I think we'll take it that way. And so I need... Uh, my thing sub word okay sut sub word um, sut sub splash dot word well that almost has to be true so let's just assert on the other entered by user equals true well Entered by user. And then and this one is not entered by user because he was a prefix. Okay. Sut so splash. And then this is that. Okay. I don't know. I sort of semi. Well. I'm going to test that that subscript thing too. Okay, so this test is um, function finds word by string all right and if you say expects Splish of id splish dot 
um, word should be equal to itself. And splish dot um can't no, count entered by user. And I'll just do this this way. I'm not liking that logic flipping, but I also want to expect set of um, bar is nil. Okay, so just a basic test on this on this subscript. Uh, yeah, no, I understood you meant in the test. So I don't know. It's a little a little bit backfilling the test, but um, it's got two paths, right? Nil or not, and then um, finding it or not. Okay, so if if there's no word of that length, then it returns nil. Let's make one more. Let's do splash because we know it's the same length. I don't have to count them. No, I should get a different word. Um, yeah, let's do bath just for fun. Splish splash. Okay, so when you put the word in, sp splish is there. It's got the right word. It's entered by the user flag is set basically opposite. Um, if you look for splash, it's the same length, but you still get nil. And if you search for bath, different length, you get nil. Okay. I think... I think those are all kind of reasonable possibilities and all covered. It feels a little funny that only these two tests care about this thing, but it's also it's it's also kind of composed out of stuff that should be there and should work. So um, it makes sense to me that you should be able to get some answer back without scanning through the list of words of a given length, you know, kind of thing. So, all right, tests ran. Um, give answers a subscript that returns answer for a given string. All right, well, we're due for a break. <laughs> I don't think you give, we'll do time enough for a bath, but uh, we've got three or four minutes, so I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. Uh, so I recorded our action there, change representation of answers so we can more quickly look up by word size. And I think back here, animation on rotation is pretty simple. Um, we're just gonna try it and if it makes it work and it looks good, we'll keep it. All right, so content view. And where's our rotation? Right. Um, so I don't know. I'm hoping if I just put with animation, and I guess I'll do it in both places. That's left. That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we've got this. Um, well, let's see what happens. Oh, it's a little something. 
Hmm. Now, let's see. I, I, I'll i take it. Although... Hmm. I was really hoping they would kind of like move themselves to the right place. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, game, it's probably inf uh, grid. Or grid. These are strings. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so the the animation stuff I was hoping would kick in, it definitely can't I mean it needs to know the identifiable thing. So if if you rotate, I think this is a corner. So, well, no, this is a corner. So this E is going to move over to here. How's it going to know it's that? You know, which E is it? It doesn't know. They all look like E's. So there's no good way to, to kind of track persistence of self. Hmm... Now, what we what we could do is don't put strings in there, put put identifiable strings in there that have an ID that it can use. Now, I don't know if I can tell it the IDs. I, I, my animation has been very lazy so far. I use this, but I know it has parameters. I know I've I've set like ease in out or whatever, but um there are other possibilities. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, is that, do you think that's a view thing? I mean, my, my guess is if they were identifiable, I, th I think, I believe what you might see, what I would hope to see, I don't know if you will or not, I would hope to you would simultaneously see N floating over here, E floating over here, U floating over here. Meanwhile, this is floating down here, or, you know, sliding down here. Um, it may look jumbled, but I think it'll look like it's jumping everything into the right place. Now, rotate the view with the grids in one direction. Yeah, I don't know if we... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm, I'm, I'm feeling like it, it... Well, what I feel like is it's crossed my mind more than once that there's something we want to do with this it's more than just a string but but so far that's all we've done and he gets passed in as strings okay somewhere I saw something uh oh okay yeah no I'm I'm expecting them all to kind of like swoop over to the right place. I think this one will probably, I think it'll look like that's going the farthest. That's going the second farthest. You know, this one will move straight up and, and they'll all kind of end up somewhere. <laughs> now, I don't know. It's a lot of stuff to animate maybe, but not as much as a particle and it does explosions and stuff all the time. So I, I'm projecting, I guess, but I think there's a way Okay, I, I believe there's a way to make 
um, Swift make string identifiable. I don't know if you have to wrap them or you can give it um, an extension. Yeah, this is this would be wrapping it. So we just create another structure that um, you know that has it. Apple's way is to do a string extension. This is a really bad example. Yeah, it doesn't work. Because <laughs> hash does not promise to give you unique values. Okay, that's not good. And equals int. I don't think it has anything that can be that. If you are sure your strings are unique, you can use the string itself as an identifier. Well, we're not sure they're not unique. Okay, that won't work. This may be the thing we have to do. Okay. I think that can be a private type. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Who's, who's going to find these values, right? If subscripts only get back strings that won't really work um well who accesses this it's gonna be a, a few places lots of tests not too much real stuff letter grid subscript selection game row and column oh is referencing into letter grid okay yeah yeah all right now our rotate let's find that that's on twister Oh, when we access, we're going through Twister, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well... This is the place that's so locked in. <sighs> I think we'll do it kind of, well, we got half an hour. It's not a lot of time for it. But let's let's make this wrapped type. Um, um, identifiable letter is identifiable. Var it equals UID. Let letter of string. Okay. So we've mapped them to arrays let's keep mapping and map to um, identifiable letter dot init cannot convert element array element chunks this that the other Okay, what do we have here? Grid. Okay, identifiable letter. Well, maybe I have to give this a constructor. I don't really.
I want to give it IDs. Well, that's probably no harm. Um, Explicitly specify the generic arguments. Array of string. Cannot convert value of string dot 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 to array of string. Which expect an argument type element UUID in case slice equals UUID. Where's the UUID coming in that? I don't see it. All right, let x equal. Okay, and then type of x should be array of string. Array of array of string. Okay. Does letter text need a unique tag? Yes, it, at least that's my my thinking. Is that going to work? You're right. It is the UI elements. Um, but I'm. I think if the elements provide the the ID tag, it can do its job. And then when you do the text, I don't know. I'm going to push through and um, we will see. Okay, so right now we have an array of array of strings. Okay, if we want to go through each of those arrays... Um, well, this is strings in something. It's getting a little complicated. Okay, break it into chunks, map them all to strings. Map all the chunks to arrays of strings. Um... And then, well, I think this map identifiable letter on each one in there is right, but we just need to do strings dot map. So for each row, I'm going to map each letter cannot argument label. Cannot convert UUID string to identifiable letter to the type string goes to identifiable letter. Okay, so the result of... Sorry, in 24, the strings we're getting is an array of string. I don't know if it'll say error. Yeah. And I wanted to take each item in the string, in the array, and map it based on this. Can I convert value of UUID string to identifiable letter? Oh. Okay. I think I'm getting burnt by the thing I said didn't matter. Yep. Okay. Now, this so far should be neutral. Like everybody's 
assigning a property to itself. Syntactor share valuation. Who called this? I think it was that that's on the head a bunch of tests in a couple places. Okay. Now this, so I want to make this be identifiable letter and then make these three places deal with it. Oops. Okay, now he gets back an identifiable letter. He can just ask for the letter. I'm pushing it out, basically. Now, this... I mean, I'm intending to be a refactoring, but it's kind of clunky. Subscript to letter grid? No, this one. This one should definitely be dot letter. Okay, I think that one's okay. Now, all right, let's run it. I'm not going to deal with those tests until we kind of decide it's working. Maybe that's wrong. All right, let's just get something selected so we can see the rotation. Oh, again, not terrible. Okay, I may be going through a lot of <laughs> grief to just do something that's not that hard or not that important. I don't know. All right, so that, that knows, but I think game game is the thing that's being modified and so whoever's accessing it's either this or the other one one of these two is going to be accessed by the view nobody's accessing this one interesting okay let's build and make sure that's true i mean it's good because we we did try and move things over to location for the most part i didn't know we'd completed that I don't know if that did anything. Oh, I did a build. Okay. Um, now this one. So who's using this one is is got to be the views, right? Game and letter view. Okay. So I should be able to say dot ID. Game sub location dot ID. Right, game supplication dot ugh, dot letter, and then change this to produce identifiable letter. Maybe letter would be enough, and don't don't wrap it or don't don't go that far. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the letter is unique and the view can see the ID on the text item and with any luck it knows what to do. So WW should move over here. Well, WWAZ should very symmetrical, isn't it? Hmm. All right, the big moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, even identifiable. Uh, there's a little blip. Okay, can we... What, what controls the speed on these things? Is that the... Um, I think you can set it in there. With animation... Oh. This will tell Make transitions. And animations to individual views, okay. Animation spring. Well, that's one place. Animate the effects of state changes. That's more like what we're doing. Yeah, this is it. Okay, yeah. Duration for easing out might be okay. I mean, I know there are animations in Swift UI. There are six or eight of these things that you can do. No. Well, there's spring, there's linear, I don't know what these all do. All right, let's, let's do it on here. That's too slow, but it's left, there's right, I'll run this. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's yeah, it's just evolving from one layer to the other. Okay, uh, let's let's un let's revert. Okay, so I I think we took a fair stab at it. I was hoping the the animation was um. I, I was hoping it would use those IDs and and animate individual objects into place rather than just switching, but I think a little bit of animation there. It does show you something's happening. I think I think that's worth it, but um hmm. Now we could probably do something I mean there it may be it maybe we could do something more visual. Like I think you were kind of going forward there, Mudshark, about you know, if we rotated the view and then and then animated the, well, if we animated that, but the problem is once we've done our thing, we've, we've got the view in the wrong rotation at that point. If we rotated it and then just slowly and then quickly reverted it back, maybe, maybe something would happen. Um, well, they are now, I mean, until I del delete this, but um, in the original, each letter was potentially the same, right? So if if the animation subsystem says, I've got this, I've got this thing, what's its identifier? I don't know. I don't have any consistent identifier based on the value of it. It's only based, you know, it knows the location in the tree, you know, um, is what it falls back to. But um with identifiable letter, it should be the case that it knows that 
in the original view, I, ID 17 was over here and now it's moved to over here. Um, so yeah, but that, I don't think that matters. They're unique in the, the core grid. Um, now I do think there's a little work to do there that, that we should have made. Um, I think, well, we have some work to do there on the multiple grids. Yes. But those aren't affected by rotation per se. You know, it, it comes more to scrolling. All right, let's revert this and put the with animation back. Okay, so game. Yeah. Game has the rotates. Oh, no, it was on content view, sorry. Yeah, not ideal, but I think it's better than better than not having any animation. <laughs> All right. Um animation on rotation. Um Yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking of that, that visual animation you're saying. Um, okay, so... Oops. Mouse control. All right, let's... Okay, so let's let's address the grids first. Um, that's infinite grid. Infinite grid. Okay, and we do create separate grid views for a fixed game. So, um, oh, well, hmm. Yeah, well, I could I could see it. Um, I I could see rotating the view ninety degrees, and then let's see how's that going to work. Yeah, I think if you rotated 90 degrees and then at the end set it back to zero, I, I think is the right way. And then, I mean, if it if it rotates slowly and then it resets to zero instantly as the board has set itself to the new structure, I think it would look okay. And yeah, 
Um, okay, the, the thing I was saying here, though, right now we've got each grid independent, but the the letters in our thing were not. So maybe that is still ambiguous because I've got the repeat, you know, I've got A here and A here and they're the same A and they have the same letter identifier, identifiable letter ID because their game is the one that knows about letter IDs. Um, then it's still got a position of it's got, I've got four things on the screen that all claim to be the, the ID before and after, and that's just confusing. Okay, so, but I do think we don't need to be that way. I think we can extract this. I mean, uh, the view doesn't need, we don't need nine copies of the view because I think they're all independent. All right, well, let's make sure that's true. Um, I'll just call it grid view. It's a method. Oh, no, I don't want to do that at all. I think I want to do this. Um, grid view. And return the stack. Okay. Um, I don't think we'll see any difference from that. It's it's view based, so we're going to run it to find out. But I think that's okay. All right, so that should affect scrolling. And that feels good. My OIL. Squat school, squat school, squat school. Okay, uh, that, that feels good. All right, so um, create only one copy of the grid view used by infinite grid. All right, now back to this thing on rotation. All right, so let's go to Swift UI rotation. Rotation effect angle. Okay. All right, let me try this, but I'm going to do degrees minus 30. So I'm, I'm hoping they tip a little to the left. <laughs> now it's not for playing this way, but just seeing the view. Okay. So if that thing spun around and then the letters twisted, so they're sideways, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I can't tell. No, I guess I'm okay. So minus 90. I guess because I know the letter tops, I could tell it's rotating negative. Um, yeah. Okay. So that definitely is rotated 90 degrees left. And if it went through that process, whoop, um, and then the letters move twisted sideways. I would call that a great, a great animation for it. That, that would be my ideal. Okay. So to do this, we need 
Well, what is degrees? Is an angle. Okay, so we need an angle. looks okay and this should go back to our normal look and rotation yeah Okay, um, so now with animation, right, yeah, I want to do this one with completion. So with animation, set a value, and then on completion, reset it. What did I call that? Sorry, angle. Angle equals dot degrees minus 90. And then here we're going to set angle equals zero. All right, we'll just try this one. Did that work? T I C E from the bottom left. Okay, it kind of did. I think I think we're on to something. Okay, let's keep this. Not not perfectly perfect, but but decent. Okay, and it it's sort of sliding around. I'll, I'll do it again with a selection, but I think I think I'll I'll take this for a good win. That that angle rotation, you know, the view rotation inside there like that, that's definitely nice. The transition into the new letters is less nice, but um, given the view, yeah, what's R-A-S-E? Hmm. It makes me want to try it outside. If all letters rotate in the opposite direction at the same time. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. Hmm. 
I think the animation is done by the time it does its thing. Uh, let me try it in two steps and then we'll we'll call it a wrap either way. Okay, so I think if we do this and then can we do it like this? I don't know if you can get the sequence of two animations. I think there's a different way to do that. This is rotate right. Well, he should have been plus 90. I think that's all right. Compared to left. Yeah, no, I think this right is definitely looking better. It That just substitutes them immediately. This one does take a second to animate that. I, I'm going to I'm going to go with that. All right. So this is just separating out the animation. We'll check this and then call it a week. All right. Reminder, I'm out next week. I'll be back the week before week following, which I guess is the first week of November. Oh, unique. Do we have any? No. Okay. Um, let's select some letters and make sure how it looks. Was that right? Tarita going down with Q on the top. No, something is wrong. Okay, I'm going to put it back. <laughs> um, We'll leave it for now. Um, I think we got to something that's acceptable and noticeably improved. And um, I think there may be a couple other things that are worth doing before we before we come back to this one. But um, yeah, something's something's weird like that. I'll make sure this isn't as weird, but um, yeah, something's funny. I think maybe maybe to do sequenced animations, I think there's maybe a different thing you have to do. All right, so QI should end up horizontal and in the second row. It's not. Or did I say it wrong? I've got too many cues there. D S L. There, there should be D S L in the second row. I don't think it's in the second row. Well, it's in the third row. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll keep looking at it. I think I don't think it's screwing up the letters. I think it feels like maybe something's sliding down a little when we rotate. W, I, W. Okay, then W, I, W. Th this seems right. I, T, T, D, A, I, T. I, T, D, D, A, I, T. Okay. Okay. Three up, three from the side. Three from the top. I guess that's okay. All right. Anyway, I'll be back Monday, the whatever that is, third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in there, <laughs> um, two to four thirty Eastern, six to eight thirty p.m. UTC. 
Uh, thanks, Mud Shark. Some great ideas today. I loved love the way this view thing is is heading towards, even if it's not 100% perfect for us. Um, but, but it's much more suggestive of what's going on in those rotations and much, much better than just appearing with different letters that happen to be right. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to try and um, uh, at least make a test flight for this and get a, get a couple family members to try it out too. So uh, hopefully that'll be good, but I'm making good progress. I think we'll come back. The focus next time will be, uh, well, a couple things. One is tessellations. The other is dealing with that full answer list and maybe trying this tree, tri -e data structure. Um, see if that might be fast enough. Rotate might need to be called and completed. Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll consider it. Um, let me let me put a little more on the um, rotation animation. Uh, can we make it look even better? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks again, and uh, have a good week yourself, and take care. Bye-bye.